Hello and welcome to Angles and Acid, where we learn things maths and science, and today I'm still sick, but uh, there's something that my students need to know. So here's a little uh, video about uh, graphs, all right? Now, I understand that graphs are not particularly interesting to everybody, um, but that is like that, and I was the same way until I started sort of seeing uh, graphs in, new, in a new way. I started seeing them as little stories. But uh, before I get to the whole story anal uh, analogy, uh, I just want to give you some very basic tips on how to start reading a graph. So it, a graph could be of anything, uh, 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 maybe something you've never seen before. Where do you start? So most graphs tend to have two axes, all right? So we've got the horizontal, which is sometimes known as the x-axis, and then we've got the uh, vertical, which is sometimes referred to as the y-axis. Uh, generally, uh, we call this a horizontal, we call this in the independent variable. And then, uh, I'm just going to put V for variable. And then uh, the vertical will be the um, dependent. And I'll put a V again. So um, the bottom axis here will be the thing that, that causes the change in the other one. So for example, number of punches to the face and how happy you feel, you know? The punches cause you to feel differently, right? Or um, uh, let's say the time, uh, and then that sort of drives how far you've driven, or how much money you've earned, or um, how much work you've got done, things like that. So usually uh, the bottom axis is your independent, the one that causes the change, and this is the one that is responding. Okay, so besides that, I like to think that the, uh, when you read graphs, I want you to read the graph in this direction. So, you know, often you'll find, um, uh, uh, let's say there's a line graph, so it goes up and down, okay? Um, I want you to imagine a little Super Mario, so little character here, and if you've ever played Mario, it's probably a very dated idea, but Mario, the way it works is that you would jump over pipes and you'd step on turtles and things like that. But Mario was always, like, to progress through the level, it was always towards the right hand side. That's where you got to the very end, you jumped on the flagpole and then, you know, things like that, you move on to the next level. I want you to read a graph in the same direction. I want you to read from left to right. And just like how Mario has to jump over terrain to get to the ending, I want you to imagine like as Mario has to traverse across this orange graph, what's happening, okay? So if this, if this uh, vertical axis, let's say this is, um, let's say this is money. Okay, and then I'll put the units for money. So I'm just gonna put, you know, dollars or something like that. Maybe AUD uh, or something like that. And the bottom here could be, let's say time. And then I gotta put down brackets for what time is measured in. So let's say, I don't know, days. Okay, so what, what, what's happening here? What is the orange line describing? Well, if I read the graph of Mario, we start off with practically uh, at the very beginning, so we, way at the start of the game, way at the start of the level, way at the start of time, you practically have no money because you're all the way down pretty much at the lowest end on the money scale. And then as time progresses, you see that, oh, there was a quick, pretty uh, big increase in the amount of money. Uh, it went down a little bit. It went up a little bit, down a little bit, and there's a huge spike here. So you might like, oh, that's an important point, maybe. Something interesting happened right there. And then it sort of plateaued for a while, and then it jumped up a little bit more, and then it sort of plateaued again. So that's the way you would read it. So you would say, well, um, at time zero, the amount of money was about zero. And then at this time interval, so I'm cutting the, I'm, I'm slicing the graph whenever there's something really interesting happening, all right? So between here and here of Mario's time, the money has gone up a little bit. And then between here and here, not much change, a little bit up and down, little, you know, things like that, a little bit of variability. And then from here to here, oh, it went down a little bit. And then from here, uh, sorry, uh, in this region of time, it skyrocketed uh, to really high value, okay? So that's basically what we're doing here. That's how you read a graph. So. Um, I want to take you through some of the, um, I don't know if I can zoom. Oh, I can zoom. How cool is that? All right. Um, I want to take you through some graphs just to get the idea that graphs are stories. Oh, they can be. 
So um, something that usually happens um, for me is that uh, stress um, tends to create mess in my life. So as the, so what, what's happening here? So as I get more and more stressed, how does that affect the cleanliness or the neat, you know, how, how my bedroom or my living room or the kitchen dishes, all right? So maybe when you got very low stress, let's say there's no stress, is it a messy place? Maybe, maybe there's like a certain base level of stress, oh, sorry, of mess. And then as I get a little bit more stressed, oh, it tends to creep up a little bit. So I'm going up a little bit. And then maybe you see a graph looks like that. So what we're seeing here is the relationship between stress and mess is that it looks almost like a straight line climbing higher and higher and higher as I get infinitely more and more stressed. All right, well, let's look at another example, something that I remember as a kid, uh, whenever we had to go to the beach or we're driving home from a long trip somewhere, I found that uh, distance to the toilet had a profound influence on how much I need to pee. So what would this graph look like? Well, when you're really far away from the toilet, you're all right. But as you get closer and closer and closer, so remember the distance towards the toilet is getting fewer and fewer. As you get closer and closer and closer, you really start going, you're like that last, like you're just pulling up to the service station and you're, you're going to get the petrol in the car and you get, your mum and dad's getting out a drink of water and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, I'm busting. And it just goes higher and higher. All right. So there's a little graph here describing that little story relationship. And so there might be a link here or it could just be time. But for me, I always felt like, you know, I was okay until we got like, you know, closer and closer to the, to the toilet. Um, another one, uh, you can imagine, uh, this one back in the old days when we used to watch TV. Oh, remember those days? They were great. Um, so I'm going to have here time. And this is going to be fun. And uh, obviously with these graphs, what I should have been doing is I should have, hang on, my, my camera's like focusing all the time. Let me just, let me just set that in manual here. Um, I think it's, there we go. All right. So that should hopefully stop the camera from wobbling and all that. Um, for all these graphs, I actually should have written a title. Okay. So it should be a title here to give you some clue what's going on. Um, so this one here is going to be, uh, my enjoyment of Game of Thrones. All right, so Game of Thrones, that TV show where everyone dies, rare, that one. So I, I don't know about you, but I, 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 when, when, when the, uh, the film was just about to start, um, I'm super excited. I'm like right up here, really, really excited. So I'm having the most fun. I'm really excited. And then the episode starts, but it doesn't start with the character I actually like. It's always the other character, like I don't care. Just get to, you know, get to the uh, get to the other cool people. And but but so it's like ah. Oh. And then finally, your favorite character appears. Oh, I'm having lots of fun now. And then it gets really really exciting. And then let's pretend, you know, oh, it's a commercial break. Darn it! So unhappy about the commercial break. Oh, we're back in the film. It's getting absolutely crazy. And then somebody dies. All right, so you can sort of see like I start off with this much of fun at the very beginning of the of the of the TV episode, and then as I go forwards, Mr. Mario is traveling. He's traveling downwards, right? We're having less and less fun. Then as I go from here to here, Mario he's going upwards. All right, so he's getting more and more fun, and then he's going up down up down up down up down, and then suddenly from here to here, Mario's just fallen down a, tra a, a, a ravine. Mario's stuck down here for a short period of time. He's having absolutely no fun. Then he climbs all the way to the top and then so on and so forth. That's roughly how we make, little graphs make stories. You might want to exercise for yourself is to draw a little graph about, you know, how much work you get done during a school term. All right. So like from week one to week 10, you can sort of model, you know, how do you feel about how much work you know? Are, are you sort of like a slow, like, do you sort of do like uh, nothing? It's week one. It's week, It's only week two. It's only week three. It's, oh, I was like, oh, you know what? I got a few assignments. You know, I got to get some work done. <laughs> Things like that. So you might have a little graph of your own to show that. Okay.
I think I'll cut the video there. I've given the main point about how to read a graph. Um, I do want to go into detail how to describe a graph. That's a skill that you need to know. So you sort of, it's our first foothold into uh, data interpretation and data analysis. So you just got to look at stuff and then see where that, see what it's showing you.